Welcome back to Pit Pass. Through the years, we have often shown some of the biggest races in the state featuring the top classes. So it's nice when we can spotlight races for the support divisions. Such was the case on Saturday at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway. On tap was the Ed Laboon 20, with $2,000 going to the winner of the sportsman event. Yeah, well, last summer, uh, my dad uh, lost the battle to cancer. So about a week after he passed, uh, we've been growing up here our whole life. He raced here. Obviously, I race here. My youngest brother raced here. So we thought it'd be fitting to put a race together in his memory, see if we make an annual event. Uh, the first year, we got 27 cars on short notice. This year, I think we got 36 tonight. So we're trying to continue to grow it and uh, pay tribute to my dad. And you've raised a lot of money here. Yeah, we raised uh, quite a few thousand dollars here, and everything goes back to the racers. And um, you know, if there's any money left over, we donate to American Cancer Society or carry it over to next year's race, depending on how much money there is. So uh, no one pockets anything. Goes, you know, any, anything we have goes back to the drivers, and uh, that's how it should be to support the guys you know, who uh, put the money and their time and heart into the sport. Now, you guys are racing for a lot more than you normally would, so it's uh, brought some heavy hitters to the track that people who normally don't race here. Yeah, and it's nice to see a lot of cars that I've just seen on TV or on on the Internet or even at Lernerville for big shows. To see them at my home track is uh, really gratifying. And I just hope everyone remembers it's 32 laps. So for, there are 32 cars and 20 laps to get it done. So patience, patience would be key. Yeah, and this is a chance for uh, maybe some of the locals here to strut their stuff and you know, a little bit of pride here to keep these outsiders from winning. Yeah, that's exactly right. This track, it's pretty big, pretty sweeping corners, and setup's key. So I think a lot of heavy hitters here, obviously, they'll find their way to the front. But the local sent this track pretty well, too. So wouldn't be a surprise. A couple local guys won a lot of races here. Give them a good run tonight. By virtue of winning the Dash for Cash, Jeff Bratyshevsky in the 08 would start on the pole position. Early on, it would be a two-car battle for the top spot between himself and the 45 of Pat Weldon. Throughout the race, two and three wide racing would be the norm. With five laps down, the yellow flew as Tim Burns came to a rest against the wall in the backstretch. Bronischewski picks the outer lane on the restart. However, Weldon is able to beat him to the line. Going through one and two, Weldon opens up the lead slightly. A three-car battle for third settles out temporarily as they race down the backstretch. Then as they go into turn three, Bonaszewski closes the gap on the leader. He is within two car lengths as they come down to complete lap number six. A lap later, the 08 works underneath the 45 ride in one and two. Bonaszewski slides up and kills the momentum of Weldon on the exit of the turn. Same lap, and here is a battle for fifth place. The 56 of Brian Wagner leads the group on the outside. Number 60, Brian Hutchko, has the inner group with the 17 of Rusty Moore on his back bumper. The 23 is Bobby Whitley. We had a caution on lap 10. Weldon, as the leader, picks the inside on the restart. After losing the lead to Weldon on the previous restart, Bronischewski returns the favor as we get back to green flag racing. Hutchko works his way past the 67 of Jamie Duncan to move into third place. However, Duncan does not roll over easily. He makes his 67 machine hug the bottom of three and four. He slides up in front of Hutchko to retake the position. For the next couple of laps, Bonaszewski held a comfortable lead over Weldon, Duncan, and Rusty Martz in the 16th. Hutchko had fallen back to fifth and was challenged by Moore. Weldon had another shot at retaking the lead on this restart, but Bronischewski pulled away exiting turn two. Martz would keep his mount to the inside of Weldon in an attempt to move into second. Weldon has him by a car length going down the backstretch. Martz makes it stick on the bottom of three and four to pull ahead of Weldon as they come to the line to complete another lap. Hutchko's top five run came to an end on lap 17. The same for Duncan, as he is pushed to the pits during the caution. So it was Rusty Martz's turn to see if he could wrestle the lead away from Bronischewski. Again, the 08 pulls away on the top side. Jeff Bronischewski would hold on to win the Ed Laboon Memorial. Jeff, congratulations on the win. Now, Weldon got you on that one restart, but on the rest, um, you had them covered. Yeah, he did. Uh, I was kind of, I, I guess he caught me sleeping there, and. I seen him pushing. I knew I could get back past him, so I wasn't too worried. I just had to settle myself down a little bit. Then after that, you had to deal with Marks. Uh, he, he closed on you, but you, again, you had him covered. 
Yeah, uh, I saw him underneath me. Uh, not a car you want to see underneath you, uh, but uh, we were able to help him off. Uh, I knew I was running a good line. I was strong coming off too, so I felt pretty confident. Now you're not one of the regulars, but you've ran here enough. You feel good kind of holding off all these outsiders? Yeah, PMS is a place that uh, it'll surprise you. You think you got it covered and you go out and you're like, you feel like you never drove a race car before. You're like, what? <laughs> And the added money here, this thing's really gotten huge in just the second year. Yeah, it did. I got to thank Vince for that. I mean, that's a, that's great. I, I can't imagine all the work he has to go through to, to put this race together, dealing with everybody. And I mean, my hat's off to him. And I thought it was pretty uh, pretty cool of him. He didn't even race in his own race. You know, I thought that was uh, that showed a lot of character for him. I thought. And when you open things up like this, obviously you have to adjust some rules for cars from the outside. I would say they did a pretty good job. It seemed fairly even. Yeah, I don't know that. I was always racing towards the front, so uh, except for uh, you know the feature, I couldn't see anything that was going on behind me. But uh, I, I was looking at some numbers and some cars, and I uh, you know I got beat by a lot of these cars at different tracks, so I, I knew what their their potential was. Rusty Martz, Pat Weldon, Rusty Moore, and Bobby Whitling round out the top five in the Ed Laboon Memorial. Well, hats off to Vince Laboon for organizing the race in honor of his father. And it's commendable that he chose not to compete in the race bearing his father's name. Well, we are not done with highlights from Pennsylvania Motor Speedway. Up next, it is some late model action from Saturday. Pit Pass returns right after this. It's known as the Tricky Triangle. A track whose sum total equals a challenge like nowhere else. Smoke is boiling for three months and Johnson. It is Pocono Raceway, where the first race was won by a king. Every race is full throttle to the photo finish. Virtual dead heat. And wrecks are not the end, but the start of a comeback. This is Pocono Raceway, where history is measured in right angles. <laughs> 